Yes, sir. Welcome back to another Chopper Die podcast. I am your host, Molly Mo, Jamal Forrest. And listen, on this episode, we are introducing the hot read. Yes, the hot read is a new segment where we get quick and insightful updates from the top Washington Commanders beat reporters. Boots on the ground individuals who can give you the day-to-day nuggets, things that they learned, things that they picked up from being on site at the Washington Commanders practices. Uh, first up is Chris Russell. Uh, Chris Russell, 1067 The Fan. Does a good job on the radio, entertaining individual, right? Um, but I talk with Chris Russell quickly uh, to get answer some quick questions as we continue throughout the course of this training camp. Uh, things that stood out to him, things that are important to us. Uh, so, without further ado, man, the hot read starts right now. Watch him throw the ball, man. we gon' pick it off You gon' let him hit the hole or you gon' cut it off You gon' play through fourth and long or you gon' punt it off Your defenders have you hit us, put your pads in Don't be looking for the ref to throw no flags in Keep the helmet on, keep the cleats tight You the type to want to win by any means, right? You should look alive, this is Trap or Dive And joining us right now is the good man Chris Russell of 106.7 The fan, Chris, I appreciate you joining us uh let's start with Jaden daniels um a progress report man what have you been seeing from Jaden daniels over the weeks worth a, a first a few training camp practices yeah jay good to be with you uh as always uh appreciate you having me i mean listen uh i think yesterday um i, I wasn't able to make uh tuesday's practice unfortunately um last thing uh came up but you know from people that i talked to people that were there um you know, and, and and all the reporters, it was his clearly best day. And I thought he was a little up and down and erratic from Friday, Sunday, and Monday's practice uh, as they gradually increased his workload with the number ones. Um, certainly some positive moments and some great throws and some things that you like and mobility. Uh, and you see some of how they're going to deploy the offense, especially in the red zone. Uh, you know, and st- some stuff that they don't obviously want to show us uh, and show the fans that they're going to do. Um, but I thought he kind of sh- maybe a little up and down against, uh, you know, as they gradually increased his reps with the ones. Um but, but then yesterday, it seemed like he hit a different stride, a different level, which was really good to see going into the day off uh, on Wednesday. And then they come back on uh, and they have this weird schedule. They're doing Thursday and Friday and then Saturday off and then Sunday on uh, as they get ready for that joint practice next week with the Jets. So, you know, I would say overall, um, pretty much what I expected in terms of Jaden Daniels uh, looks the part, looks professional, looks calm. Uh, now that I've seen them, I don't know, five or six practices, seven practices, uh, including, you know, mini camp and all that, um, you know, I'm like, OK, I, I, I mean, he's going to be the deal. We know that he's going to be the starter. I think we all know that it's just a matter of how long it takes him to adjust and get into a cohesion and a rhythm, not only with the offensive line, but the receivers and everybody that's a part of this. And they are going to need it because the first six games, I keep talking about this. I don't think too many people are worried about this. I don't know. The first six games to me, Jay, I I don't know how you feel. Uh, They are a brutal gauntlet of pass rushes uh, and defenses that the commanders are going to have to go against. Uh, And, 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 you know, there's a lot of work to be done needless to say before that and then there's a lot of work that's going to be done during those six games just to keep him standing straight overall man what have you learned uh what has stood out for you uh you can go team you can go structure you can go organizationally however you want to uh utilize that what what stood out and and what have you learned well i I think you know you notice there's a lot more pep in everybody's step. Let's start with that. There's a more tempo, more pace, more intensity, uh, more, um, 
you know, again, just a different way of doing a lot of the same things that we always see at, at training camp. I think you were out there uh, a couple of days um, and and you just notice a tempo, right? And, an, a, and a different energy level that maybe the old staff just didn't have for whatever reason. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I think, um, you know, I think everyone that I've talked to, you know, I talked to veteran corner Mike Davis uh, the other day who had an interception against Jaden Daniels last Friday. And he come over from the Chargers and it didn't sound like he was too big of a fan of Brandon Staley, number one. Number two, he just said, you know, like about Dan Quinn, and this was just a couple of days in, he goes, leader, man. You know, he's like, it's all about the leadership. And I think these guys, you know, look, I don't know how talented, how deep of a team this is, Jay, but I know they will put their asses on the line and I, I think they will bust everything that you can bust, you know, for lack of a better term, to get to max out what this team is going to be. And maybe that's just eight wins. Maybe that's seven wins. Maybe that's nine wins. And they, you know, surprise some people. And I would say many people. But I think you're not going – I would be very, very, very surprised if you see the kind of blowouts and the kind of just – just – disasters that we got in the second half well really in in december and and, and into january of last year uh, and maybe even before that i guess uh, thanksgiving day in dallas as well but you know you, you get my point like this team is going to play and and break through a brick wall I, I i believe and and that's something big that you notice and then the other thing that you, you for me that i've noticed i think there's been more you know, there's no way for me to conclusively prove this unless I match scripts and whatever. But from day one, this stood out in my mind. There is much more of an emphasis, a heavier emphasis, I think, on special teams and not just the new kickoff rule. You know, I expected that. But from day one, um, the new place kicker, uh, what's his name, Ramiz Ahmed, was kicking field goals. Tress Way was booting punts. Uh, they've worked on, obviously, the return game on both sides. They've worked different ways. They've worked different situations, suicide, you know, all that. Stuff. And and I think, like, there's always been a special teams period or maybe two in training camp practices that I've been to over 15 years. But it just seems like there's a different emphasis and a different intensity about them. And I noticed it right from day one. So I'm pleased about that because I'm a big special teams guy. I think it costs teams or wins teams more games than people realize. Now, I know you said that you had missed uh, Tuesday's practice, yeah. but um, out of outside of that, the players that have caught your eye, whether it's good and or bad what who, who are the some some of those guys that stood out yeah so on offense i mean it looks like austin eckler still has plenty of juice in his legs number one uh i think jeremy mcnichols has looked spry not that i wasn't expecting him to look good but i think he's looked spry brandon coleman the rookie uh you know offensive tackle from tcu he's My had guy. some you know he's had some struggles man but you know, know. Uh, I knew right from the get go that that they got something here. Um, you know, I had a TCU offensive coach uh, tell me right after uh, the selection that I that I've come to know over the last couple of years, um, you know, that this kid has just a nasty demeanor without being nasty, if that makes sense. It, meaning his play style, you know, kind of some what what we got out of a young Trent Williams, you know, where there's a certain intensity level that you're going to get from Brandon Coleman. And listen, he's going to get beat from time to time. Uh, you know, he has gotten beat a couple of times. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying he's, you know, like fit him for his gold jacket yet in Canton. But I do think ultimately, I do think ultimately based on what I've seen over a week so far, that he's probably going to be a starter sooner than later, if not week one in Tampa. And again, he's going to have to go against some really, really good pass rushes uh, out of the shoot. I would say Bryson Tremaine uh, has stood out a little bit on offense as a wide receiver. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, for me on defense, the secondary guys have 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 really shined. You know, Emmanuel Forbes looks better. Benjamin St. Juice uh, looks less handsy. Um, you know, I think Derek Forrest looks, uh, you know, like he's sort of getting back into things after a really tough start to last year and the injury. I think Quan Martin is one of these guys that just fans are going to continue to fall in love with. And I think they already are. Mikey Sanders still 
at nickel slot corner. I'm really optimistic. So far, Caillou Blue Kelly had an interception uh, off of a four wide, two by two setup the other day. I think that was off of a deflection, but I can't remember. Yes, and it dropped uh, it. Yeah, I, and and, and you know, up. like yeah, to me, like those guys. And again, it's early. I get it. They un they they you know everybody's working off of scripts. Every I understand it's going to be different when we get to, you know, the Jets game, when we get to the Dolphins game, when we get to the regulars. I got it. Understood. But I'm optimistic based on what I've seen out of those guys. And then we could talk about, you know, the linebackers and Frankie Louvu and all that stuff uh, as we go along here. But, I mean, that to me has jumped out to me. The improved at least play right now early on through six practices of the secondary. Something that's caught your eye, whether it's from any of the coaching staff members or the players, uh, from any of the pressers that you've been a part of? Well, you know, I, I think the one thing that jumps out to me is Dan Quinn doesn't give you a lot while being really nice about it and, and, and being really friendly and helpful to the media, but he doesn't give you a lot of substance, you know. But he'll give you a couple of things, and I take it back to last Tuesday when he had – you know, he and Adam Peters had the season opening, you know, introduction. He said a couple of things. He said, you know, um, basically there's no secrets here. You know, we know where we're heading in terms of the quarterback situation, but we're not essentially just going to hand it to Jaden Daniels. And, and that's paraphrasing, obviously. But he did give you that, right, that that everybody understands and everybody recognizes that Jaden Daniels is almost surely going to be the starter September the 8th against Tampa. So we'll start with that. But he also in that same press conference, Jay, and, and this is what I kind of, you know, uh, mention or what I what I mean, but you know he he didn't exactly give you, hey, this is how we're going to do things. But he strongly indicated, and I know I was listening, and I said it immediately, and I said the number one takeaway I had is they are going to slow, uh, you know, slow feed, if you will, this process with Jaden Daniels. They are not just going to throw the grand piano at him and expect him to save the day. They are going to give him little nuggets, little pieces, little, um, you know, little bites, if you will. And, the, and, and that has even played out maybe differently than I thought. I thought they would do that, but I I wasn't sure how they were going to operate with Marcus Mariota being the veteran. And, you know, as you know, I'm sure uh, the first couple of days of camp, Mariota was basically exclusively with the ones and a little sprinkling of Jaden Daniels. But then starting last Friday, so now what, four or five practices, I guess four practices ago, they started just gradually increasing Jaden Daniels' work with the ones and against the ones. And now you see the ramp up, the slow ramp up, which I think is really important because there's so, you know, people think, well, it's just because you're the number two overall pick and you played a bunch of college games that you know everything. And, and just because you, you know, you're, you're on a plane after the draft calling out plays in the aisle while you're heading back to California and, 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 and you're scheduling workouts right after the draft and, and everything, and you come in at 5.30 in the morning and all this stuff that that everybody just knows everything and is 100% proficient. That's just not the way it works. It's not the way it works in life. That's not the way it works in the NFL. So the way they've done this, I think, is really good. And yet Dan Quinn gave you some indications about how they were going to do it, but didn't give you exactly the plan and wasn't too revealing. And I kind of like that. I kind of appreciate that because, A, it gives us a little more guessing game stuff, and B, we all know that Ron Rivera at some times was way, 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 way too transparent. And you don't want to give the house away, even though you want to help the media, you don't want to, and the fans, you don't want to give the house away and kind of tell them things that you don't need to tell anybody, quite honestly. So I like how Dan Quinn has handled uh, this. The, you know, the player press conferences, they don't do a lot for me, to be honest with you. I mean, um, you know, everybody says kind of the same thing and everybody says the right thing for the most part. But, you know, the Dan Quinn stuff is interesting. Chris Russell, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chris, you got the floor, man. Plug in anything and everything that you got going on, boss. 
Well, um, you know, so every day I do this uh, radio show that uh, I, I, uh, I'm charged you with doing go to war with. If, from uh, <laughs> from one to four on uh, on T980 and the Odyssey app, which is available anywhere. And it's obviously uh, a great way to listen to the show live or on demand or or. Uh, podcast and you mentioned Linnell. Linnell Willingham and I go at it on Wednesday and Thursday. We have Windbag Wednesday and Throwdown Thursday, and then on Tuesdays I've got the Super Bowl champion and DC legend Doc Walker with me uh, for the entire show. And then Monday and Friday they let the rooster out of the cage on his own, uh, without like um, you know closing the trap door and 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 without uh, saying um, you know uh, anything you know really uh, you know bad to me. They just let me do my thing, which is pretty cool, right? So I still get some independent in that regard. I have some co-hosts, obviously, in the middle of the week. We mix it up. We go at it. We spar at it. We have some fun. We laugh. Uh, and that's pretty much it, man. I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I still do some writing for um, Command Post Magazine, which is a Rick Snyder production, a legendary longtime uh, reporter here in Washington, D.C. It's a commanders-based uh, newspaper magazine that's available for by by a subscription uh, and as well digitally. So people should check out Command Post Magazine. And outside of you know some appearances with B Mitch and JP Finley and uh, and some others, the junkies on on 1067 the fan. That's pretty much it. Man, I'm 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 not semi retired, but I'm heading there, Jay. You know, I got it's hard keep it up with you I'm young bucks, you know? Me, right? you know, you're doing, you're doing a lot. <laughs> this is a good thing, man. Keep you active. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> All right. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Russell. Longer, you gon' punt it off. Your defenders have you hit us, put your pads in. Don't be looking for the ref to throw no flags in. Keep the helmet on, keep the cleats tight. You the type to want to win by any means, right? You should look alive. This is Trapper Dive.